Question 23. Work out the value of 5 over root 3, take away the square root of 6 and 3 quarters. We need to give our answer in the form k root 3, so it's something multiplied by root 3. Okay, so let's start by working on this part of the, um, of the calculation. So we've got the square root of 6 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to start by saying, well, I know that the square root of 6 and 3 quarters, if I write that as a improper fraction, first of all, um, well, 6 whole ones is going to be 24 quarters. So I've got 24 quarters and another 3 quarters. So that's going to be 27 quarters. And I want to do the square root of 27 quarters and that's going to be equal to the square root of 27 divided by the square root of 4. Okay, so if we simplify the square root of 27, that's going to be the square root of 9 times by the square root of 3, which is going to be equal to 3 root 3. And if I um, simplify the denominator there, the square root of 4 is in fact 2. So we've got um, the square root of 6 and 3 quarters is the same as 3 root 3 divided by 2. OK, we're now going to work on the first part of this calculation, which is 5 root, um, over root 3. And we're going to rationalise the, the denominator. So 5 over root 3. To rationalise that, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by root 3 over root 3. And that's going to be equal to, well, 5 times root 3 is just going to be 5 root 3. And root 3 times root 3 is going to be 3. So I've got 5 root 3 over 3 for that part there. I'm now going to try and do this calculation because I've got um, two rational numbers on the denominator here. So we should be able to do this calculation. So let's write it out. 5 root 3 over 3 take away 3 root 3 over 2 Oops, 3 root 3 over 2 okay so we need to have a common denominator here so the denominator is going to be 6 so we've got something over 6 take away something over 6 so uh, 5 root 3 over 3 is going to be the same as 10 root 3 over 6 and 3 root 3 over 2 is going to be the same as 9 root 3 over 6. I've just tripled the numerator and the denominator. And 10 root 3 um, over 6, take away 9 root 3 over 6, is going to be equal to um, 1 root 3 over 6, or 1 sixth of root 3. Okay? And we've now got it in the form k times root 3. So k is going to be 1 sixth. So 1 sixth root 3. OK, question 24. We're asked to convert 0 0.28 recurring into a fraction. And we need to give our answer in its simplest form. So um, in order to change this into a fraction, I'm going to start by saying x is equal to 0 0.28 recurring. OK, so let's just be um, clear about what we mean here. So that's going to be 0 0.2888, etc. OK, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 10 so I can take the non-recurring part in front of my decimal point. So 10x is going to be equal to 2.8 recurring. So 2.88, etc. OK, so um, I've now just got something that's recurring after my decimal point. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to multiply this equation by 10. And that's going to give me 100x equals and all of my digits are going to shift forward one place 
and that's going to be 28.8 recurring okay and the eights are going to carry on forever okay so now I've got a 0.8 recurring in this equation and I've also got a 0.8 recurring in this equation so I'm now going to do 100x take away 10x which gives me 90x so that's this equation take away this one and then I've got 28.8 recurring take away 2.8 recurring and that's just going to give me 26 so 90x is equal to 26 which tells me that x is going to be equal to 26 90ths so I divide both sides by 90 and I can simplify that because that's going to be equal to 13 45ths and I can't simplify that any further so my answer is going to be 0 0.28 recurring is in fact the same as 13 45ths okay question 25 in the Venn diagram the universal set is 295 students in a college so this is 295 students altogether a is equal to the students who take art so these are the students who take art and G is the students who take geography part A asks one student is chosen at random work out the probability the student takes art so from this universal set of 295 we're going to choose one student at random again 295 one, one student is going to be chosen at random um, and we want the probability that that student takes art well they're actually 25 plus 14 which is 39 there are 39 students who take art out of a possible 295 so we've got a 39 295th okay part B says one student who takes geography is chosen at random so just from this set here of students who take geography one of those is chosen at random we want to work out the probability that the student also takes art so out of these 43 students 29 and 14 is 43 students 14 of them take art so that's going to be 14 out of 43 students altogether so 14 40 thirds okay part C says in this Venn diagram so this is now a different Venn diagram again the universal set is the 295 students in the college H represents the students who take history and E are the students who take English one half of the students who take history also take English the number who take English is twice the number who take history and we need to work out the value of X so coming back over here one half of the students who take history also take English so of all the students or together take history the ones that take English must be a half of them so that means if that's X there this whole group here for history must be 2x which means that must be x there okay so if that's x that's x the whole thing is 2x and half of those take history which is x okay the number who take english is twice the number who take history well there are 2x people who take history and the number who take english is twice that so the number who take english must be 4x so this here must be 4x altogether so we've already got an x here so this here must be 3x and that makes that 4x altogether okay and we used to we need to use this information to work out the value of x well i know that there are 295 students altogether so that means the sum of all of these must be 295 so x plus x plus 3x x plus x plus 3x plus 
this 125 must be equal to 295. So if we simplify this, we've got 5x plus 125 is equal to 295. If I now subtract 125 from both sides, that means that 5x must be equal to um, 170. And um, x therefore must be equal to 170 divided by 5, which is 1734. So the value of x, x is going to be equal to 34. Question 26. A and B are points on the circle with equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. A is 3, 4. B is a point on the y-axis. And P, A and P, B are tangents. So that there and that there is a tangent. We need to show that the coordinates of B are 0, negative 5. So the coordinates at this point here is going to be 0, negative 5. We need to show that that's true. Well, because we know the x-coordinate along the y-axis, um, well, b is a point on the y-axis, so we know the x-coordinate is going to be 0. I could substitute that into this equation here. So we've got 0 squared plus y squared is equal to 25 which means that y squared is equal to 25 which means that y must be equal to the square root of 25 but it's the plus or minus the square root of 25 which is going to be equal to plus or minus and the square root of 25 is 5 and seeing that this is below the x-axis um, B must be 0, negative 5. OK, part B says give a reason why PA is equal to PB. OK, um, and we use one of our circle theorems here because I know that angles from a point, um, sorry, I'll say that again, um, any tangent from a point must be of equal length. So we can say um, tangents that meet at a point are of equal length. OK, so these two tangents meet at the point P, so they must be um, equidistant to each other, have an equal length to each other. OK, part C says P is the point AB. So this here is the point AB. And we need to work out the values of A and B. OK, right, so in order to work out the coordinates of this point here, what we need to know is the equation of both of these lines here. Now, um, the line BP, well, we can work out the equation of this line fairly easily because the line BP, um, well, it goes through negative 5 over here as we worked out before. So this line here is just going to be y is equal to negative 5. Every point along this line is going to have a y coordinate of negative 5. Okay. Now, um, to find AP, the equation of the line AP, there's a little bit more work involved here. I'm going to start by drawing a line in here. there. Okay, so this is going to be a radius. Okay, a little bit thinner. Okay, this, this here is going to be a radius. 
and because this radius is meeting this tangent I know that they're going to be perpendicular to each other. Now the reason why I've done that is because I know that the gradient of this radius over here or the change in y so this change in y here is going to be 4 and the change in x over here is going to be 3 so the gradient here is going to be 4 thirds okay so if we call that m then we know that the gradient of m is going to be equal to, sorry, the gradient m is going to be equal to 4 thirds. So this here is perpendicular to m, so I'm going to call that m sub p. So if m is equal to 4 thirds, m sub p is going to be the negative reciprocal of 4 thirds. So that's going to be negative 3 quarters. Okay, so that's going to be the gradient of this line here. Now, I know that this line is going to be of the form y is equal to mx plus c. And I know that the gradient of this line, or m, is going to be negative 3 quarters. I don't know c, so I need to work that out. However, I do know that it goes through the point 3, 4, so I know possible values of x and y. So I'm going to sub those in. So instead of y, I'm going to put my y coordinate here, which is 4, is equal to m, which is negative 3 quarters, times x, which I'm going to use the 3, plus c, which is what we're trying to work out. Okay, if I now um, simplify this, I've got 4 is equal to negative 9 quarters plus C, or C is going to be equal to 4 plus 9 quarters. So that's going to be 16 quarters plus 9 quarters, which is going to be 25 quarters. Okay, so um, if I now rewrite this equation with the m and the c that I know, I know that y is going to be equal to negative 3 quarters x plus 25 quarters. Okay, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, let's just box this off over here. Okay, and I'm going to rewrite this equation by multiplying each term by 4. So I've got 4y is equal to a negative 3x, that's that times by 4, and then times that by 4, which is going to be plus 25. So we've just got something that looks a little bit easier to deal with. Now, I know that the y coordinate here has to be negative 5 because that's the line BP so I can replace my y here with this negative 5. So I've got 4 times negative 5 which is negative 20 is equal to negative 3x plus 25. Okay and if I, um, if I add 20 to both sides that's going to be 0 is equal to negative 3x plus 45, which tells me if I now add 3x to both sides, 3x must be equal to 45, and x is equal to 15. So the coordinates AB, well the x coordinate is going to be 15, and the y coordinate is going to be negative 5. So A is equal to 15 and B is equal to negative 5. Okay, so that was the last question on paper 1. Um, I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much for joining me and I will see you next time.